In this video we will show how to run a two-dimensional proton cosy experiment in ICON NMR. We will also show a couple of issues with the automated processing of the data and how to fix them. Finally, we will give the basic interpretation of the results and how to use them to help assign the NMR spectrum. To run a cosy experiment, first log into ICON NMR as you would normally do. With your sample loaded in the sample changer, open up the corresponding row for the sample holder in the experiment table. Then choose the solvent and open the experiment list. Remember, that the different instruments in the facility will not have the same ordering in the experiment list. However, you should find two different cozy experiments to choose from. We will compare the results for both later in this video. The first is called Cozy GP, SW. The second is the Cozy GP, DF, PH, SW. We will discuss the differences, but first let's highlight the similarities. Both options are called composite experiments in ICON NMR. This is denoted by the C before the name. This means that more than one experiment will be set up and run. In both of these cases a proton experiment is run first. This 1D spectrum is used for optimizing the spectrum window for the 2D experiment. This 1D spectrum is also set as the projections in the topspin data window. Bruker uses a series of two-letter codes in the pulse sequence and experiment names and deciphering the letters takes a little experience. With both of the COSI experiments the first code is GP. This means the experiments use pulsed field gradients for coherent selection. This class of experiment eliminates the need for long phase cycling to remove unwanted artifacts in the spectrum. Therefore, they can run much faster and give cleaner results than sequences developed before the gradient selection experiments. In fact, the non-gradient versions are not included in the list. The SW means that the experiments will examine the 1D proton results and optimize the spectrum window to include the area where the software finds peaks. This is successful most of the time. However, there will be examples when very small peaks of interest are missed and the collected 2D window is too narrow. There will also be cases that are less problematic where the window is too large. If this happens to you, Please see the staff and we will show you how to run experiments that do not attempt to optimize the window. Now let's discuss the differences. The DF in the second choice stands for double quantum filter. This is an additional pulse that only allows signals from protons that are coupled to other protons into the spectrum. The results will have singlets greatly attenuated or eliminated from the 2D spectrum. This could make interpretation easier for spectra that have many uncoupled resonances. The second and more important difference is the pH designation. This stands for phase-sensitive experiment. The first experiment is called a magnitude mode experiment. The main difference is that the line shapes for the phase-sensitive experiment are narrower and tail less than the magnitude mode. To achieve this, the phase-sensitive experiment requires two sets of T1 time domain results. Therefore, this experiment takes twice as long to yield the same digital resolution in F1. As we will see later in this video, the phase-sensitive COSI will also have complex peaks, each with multiple lines of different phase. These complex peaks can allow you to measure coupling constants and determine multiplet types. However, these complex peaks can be quite confusing when there is overlap. We recommend using the simple magnitude COSI. They are faster to run and the cross peaks are easier to interpret. Please see the NMR staff if you need advice with the experiment selection. After choosing COSI GPSW you will see that the two experiments have been entered. First is the 1D proton experiment. The parameters are the same as those used for just the simple proton experiment. This sample is 25 mg of ibuprofen in deuterochloroform, so no modifications are necessary. The second is the magnitude mode COSI with gradient coherent selection. The default number of scans for this experiment is set to 1. While you could get valid results with just one scan on each T1 increment, there could be some minor artifacts. We recommend running at least two scans for concentrated samples that give clean 1D results with the default 1D parameters. Increase this number to 4 or 8 if you have more dilute samples. After entering the title, click on the submit button to queue in both experiments for ICON to run. 
Total elapsed time on the instrument to set up and run both experiments is about 15 minutes. We will fast forward the data collection for the two experiments and then jump to the results in Topspin. Let's review the proton spectrum for the sample. It shows a peak for the carboxylic acid proton at 10.7 ppm. The para-substituted aromatic benzene ring has two pairs of chemically equivalent protons that fall between 7.1 and 7.3 ppm. The aliphatic region shows five chemical shifts that is consistent with ibuprofen. Based on integration the isopropyl methyl protons are the doublet near 0.93 ppm and the other methyl is the doublet at 1.53 ppm. The heavily split isopropyl methine is the 9-line multiplet at 1.88 ppm. The doublet at 2.48 ppm, with the relative intensity of 2 is the methylene and the quartet at 3.74 ppm is the methine that is adjacent to the carboxylic acid. Moving on to the cozy result we see the data as it was automatically processed. As part of the processing topspin performs a symmetrization along the diagonal. This is a shortcut that is supposed to eliminate unwanted noise or artifacts. However, ridges of noise in both axes can meet, and the routine can mathematically produce artifacts that can be mistakenly confused with real cross peaks. We have debated whether to remove this step from the processing. In some cases the symmetrization is beneficial, but we always recommend reprocessing the data without the symmetrization step. Symmetrization requires that both axes of the 2D spectrum have the same number of data points. When we review the acquisition parameters we see that the T2 window has 2048 data points while the T1 window was collected with 128 points. However, these are not the number of points used in the Fourier transform. To see what was used in the processing, you have to open the PROC PARS tab and review the parameter called SI. As you can see the defaults are 1024 for each dimension. This means that the processing is discarding half the points in the T2 window, or in other words throwing away half the collected resolution of the F2 dimension. By default, the T1 processing is increasing the number of points from the collected 128 to 1024. This is called zero filling since no new data is added to the processing, just blank points. The resulting F1 dimension will not have any added resolution, but the results will appear smoother or less jagged. We should increase the size of the T2 transformation points to at least 2048 to preserve the resolution of the collected dataset. You can either leave the T1 size at 1024 or increase it to 2048. Then we can reprocess both axes with the XFB command. The reprocessed 2D dataset will look more natural without the symmetrization process. However, if you blow up the intensity you will see streaks of noise that travel down the data. This is called T1 noise and is produced by any instrument or sample instability during the run. Mostly it is due to having relaxation delays set too short for the spins in the sample. All 2D datasets will have some degree of T1 noise. In this and most cases, the noise is far below the weakest peak and can be brought below the lowest contour. Another issue we should address with the automation processing is that the number and spacing of the contours are not optimum. Notice the white spots on the larger peaks where the contours run out before they map the top of the peaks. This can be fixed with the Edit Contours button. In the dialog box we are decreasing the contour spacing by slightly lowering the level increment and increasing the number of levels to 30. After clicking Fill and Apply, we can exit the panel by clicking the OK button. Notice how the peaks are better drawn. Now let's take a close look at what is present in a 2D cozy experiment. The spectrum shows a diagonal set of peaks and more peaks that are off the diagonal, which are called cross peaks. The diagonal contains the exact spectrum information as the 1D spectrum. The peaks line up in both axes at the same chemical shift. The cross peaks show the through bond correlations that arise from the J coupling between two protons. These cross peaks form at symmetric points from the diagonal. They connect two resonances on the diagonal, with a pattern of a square. In the case of the furthest upfield resonance, the isopropyl methyl protons show a connection to the methine resonance. 
The methine is also coupled to the methylene protons and this coupling is shown with the second correlation. These three resonances form a spin system that can be walked through, following the path that starts at the diagonal for the methyl, goes next to the cross peak between the methyl and methine. It goes back to the diagonal at the methine chemical shift, then goes to the cross peak to the methylene resonance. It finishes at the diagonal of the methylene chemical shift. The other spin system is the single correlation between the methyl and methine protons on the other side of the aromatic ring. These connections help determine the chemical shift assignments, which helps to confirm the structure. The region with the aromatic proton shows some overlap between the cross peaks and the diagonal due to the low resolution in the F1 dimension. While the peaks run into each other, the cross peaks can still be distinguished from the diagonal to show that the two types of protons on the ring couple each other. To plot the results in topspin you should first define the chemical shift range you want to include using the exact zoom button. Then click on the plot tab to bring up the plot editor. The experiment's parameters will have the correct plot layout for the cozy experiment. This is called 2D underscore home dot XWP. The vertical intensity of the projections can be adjusted by carefully clicking in the region and using either the mouse scroll wheel or the intensity icon buttons. The intensity of the 2D contours can be adjusted after you click in the 2D spectrum area. To send the output to the printer, return to the main panel and select Print from the pull-down menu under the Print section. Then click on the OK button. The double quantum filtered cozy spectrum of the ibuprofen sample is shown here. The default processing does not include the symmetrization that was performed on the magnitude cozy experiment. There is some T1 noise but it is low compared to the real peaks. Look at the congested area of the aromatic region. Due to the complex nature of the peaks, there is no clear separation between the diagonal and cross peaks. The peaks in the aliphatic region are all spaced apart so overlap is not an issue. Closely examining a cross peak, it is clear that it is a cluster of peaks with different phase. The green contours are opposite of the blue peaks. Therefore, Half the peaks are pointing in a different direction than the other. Like the magnitude experiment the default contour spacing and number should be adjusted. The tighter contours clearly distinguish these antiphase peaks. The content of this experiment is similar to the magnitude experiment. If we enter multi-display mode we can overlap the spectra to compare the two results. As you can see, the blue and green contours from the phase-sensitive double quantum filtered experiment are clearly narrower than the red contours of the magnitude experiment. This can offer an advantage, but the complexity of the phase-sensitive peaks can negate some of this benefit. This concludes this video on the 2D cozy experiments that are available in ICON NMR. Two-dimensional experiments are extremely useful to help understand and interpret NMR spectra. They can add to the information that is present in the 1D data and help remove ambiguity. With good samples they can be performed in a reasonable amount of time. Please see the staff if you have any questions about running the experiments or on processing and interpreting the results. Thanks for watching.